pain. It's something nearly all of us experience and something most of us avoid. In fact, pain avoidance is hardwired into our nervous system. Just think about the last time you touched a hot stove. I bet you yanked your hand away and didn't even think about it. That's because you don't even need a brain for that. It's a pain reflex. As you sit there in your chair and you're listening to my talk, from time to time you probably experience a little discomfort here, or a little tinge of pain there, and you use that feedback to shift your body around to end that pain and discomfort. But imagine not getting that feedback. You could end up damaging an internal organ without even knowing it. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So the experience of pain is useful. It alerts us to things that might harm us. It helps us learn from our painful mistakes. And it tells us to rest and take it easy when we're injured so we can heal. But when pain doesn't have these benefits, it's no longer useful. Chronic pain is a general term that refers to conditions in which pain is no longer of use to us. It's pain that persists beyond the usual recovery period, typically more than three months. It's resistant to treatment and sometimes has no clear cause. It includes conditions like back pain, arthritis, and fibromyalgia. It is so pervasive, you probably know someone who has it. That's because one in five U.S. adults experience chronic pain. And about one in 13 suffer from chronic pain that disables them on most or all days. The impact of chronic pain is huge. It reduces quality of life, it impairs social functioning, and it lowers productivity. Its sufferers are four times more likely to experience mental health problems, and they have two times the risk of suicide. And it costs us a lot of money. The U.S. spends over $600 billion a year on chronic pain due to health care costs, lost productivity, and disability. That's more than heart disease, that's more than cancer, and that's more than diabetes. And those things are really, really expensive. Unfortunately, some are more likely to develop chronic pain than others. Chronic pain rates are higher in the elderly, in women, those with less education, those with lower incomes, and veterans. But what you probably don't know is that Native Americans experience the highest rates of chronic pain. Approximately one in three Native Americans experience chronic pain. And about one in seven suffer from chronic pain that disables them on most or all days. That's higher than all other racial and ethnic groups in the United States. The question is why? And our research team has spent over a decade trying to solve this puzzle. But before I can tell you what we found, first, I need to tell you how our bodies respond during two competing painful events. When we're exposed to two painful events at the same time, a small painful event and a big painful event, the big painful event blocks the pain from the small painful event. And this is not just a matter of distraction. Neural signals from the big pain cause the body to reduce neural signals from the small pain. So we actually respond less both mentally and physically. To help illustrate this point, let me provide you with a somewhat everyday example. So this is Bob. Let's say Bob is minding his own business and he's happily walking down the street when ba Bob accidentally steps on a tack. When he does, two things are going to happen. First, his spinal cord is going to send a message down to his leg, causing an automatic reflex that yanks his foot away from the tack, just like your hand yanks away from a hot stove. Then, a few milliseconds later, Bob will experience the pain. Now, in this scenario, the tack represents a small, painful event. Now let's imagine a different scenario. So let's say Bob is minding his own business and he's walking down the street and he steps on a tack. But out of nowhere, a lion jumps out and bites his hand. I know. <laughs> now in this scenario, the lion represents a larger, much more important 
painful event, one that could end Bob's life. Research tells us that Bob's encounter with the lion will cause Bob's body to reduce his pain and the leg reflexes from the tack. The lion, well, I'm sorry. The reason for this is simple. Bob is much more likely to survive his encounter with the lion if he reduces responses to other smaller painful events that might interfere with his ability to defend himself. The lion is more important. So in our research, we don't make people step on tacks, and we don't expose them to lions, but we are interested in what happens during two competing painful events. The small pain is caused by brief electric stimulations that are presented to the ankle. As you can see here in the video, these are the reflexes that are caused by the ankle stimulations. We measure the size of the reflex to study how the body responds to the ankle stimulations, and we measure pain ratings to study how the mind responds to the ankle stimulations. So in this task, the big pain is caused by submerging the hand in cold, cold, painful water. And what we typically find is that pain from the cold water causes the body to reduce pain and the leg reflexes from the ankle stimulations. So understanding what happens during this competing pain task is important to understanding what we found about Native American pain risk. We conducted the largest study of Native American pain risk to date. We recruited over 300 healthy, chronic pain-free adults who were either Native American or non-Hispanic white, and we collected all kinds of data from them, including what happens during this competing pain task. And then what we did is we followed them for two years, and we assessed who developed chronic pain. Now remember, these were healthy and pain-free adults when we enrolled them in the study. We found that Native Americans were almost three times more likely to develop chronic pain. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Within a two-year period, healthy Native Americans were almost three times more likely to develop chronic pain than the non-Hispanic white group. And this wasn't due to differences in age, sex, income, or education, those variables that we know increase chronic pain risk. This was huge. No one had ever followed healthy individuals long enough to show that Native Americans develop chronic pain at a higher rate than others. But the big discovery was that we were able to predict who developed chronic pain. We found that some Native Americans didn't reduce that leg reflex during the competing pain task. And in fact, some actually had larger reflexes. And it was the Native Americans who had larger reflexes who were more likely to develop chronic pain. Now, surprisingly, most people blocked the pain from the ankle stimulations even if they had larger reflexes. It's like their bodies couldn't ignore the ankle stimulations even though their mind could. But we still had questions. Why was the body responding more when it should have been responding less? Well, as it turns out, it's a result of people's lived experiences. Native Americans are resilient people who have survived generations of adversity. They've survived genocide. There was an estimated 10 million Native Americans prior to colonization, but only about 237,000 by 1900. They survived the Indian Removal Act that forced tribal nations to leave their ancestral homelands and to relocate to other areas, including right here in Oklahoma. They survived the Dawes Act that forced them to divide their communal lands and deem them incompetent to handle their own land affairs. And they survived abusive Indian boarding schools that stripped them of their culture, their language, and their religious freedom. It wasn't until 1978 that Native American families were given the legal right to refuse boarding schools. 1978. And they continue to experience higher rates of adversity. 
In our research, we found that Native Americans were more likely to report experiencing interpersonal discrimination. They were also more likely to report experiencing more traumatic events like physical and sexual assault. And Native Americans who reported more discrimination and trauma were also more likely to report experiencing psychological stress, pain-related anxiety, and thoughts that amplify pain. Thoughts like, I worry all of the time about whether the pain will end. And it was the Native Americans who experienced discrimination, trauma, and stress who were more likely to have larger leg reflexes. And it was these individuals who were more likely to develop chronic pain. These variables did not predict chronic pain onset in the non-Hispanic white group. So together, these findings suggest that the higher rates of chronic pain in Native Americans is at least partly due to a shared history of historical and contemporary stressors. Exposure to stressors shape how the body responds to pain. The body becomes unable to ignore small painful events even though the mind can. Why? Well, a world that's full of stressors represents a world that's full of danger. And when the world is full of danger, the body goes on high alert to avoid all danger. Chronic pain may be the consequence of the body being on high alert for too long. So our research provides some clues for how to solve the Native American pain puzzle. At the societal level, we should treat others as they deserve to be treated. Be kind, be respectful, be equitable, do what you can to end discrimination. Everyone benefits because research suggests that being compassionate to others actually improves your own health and well-being. But even if we were to end all discrimination, there would still be unavoidable stressors. So we must also build resiliency. And community-based resilience is particularly important. Cultural continuity refers to connecting to one's indigenous culture. It includes things like respect for elders, a connection to home, earth, and environment, practicing indigenous ceremonies, and passing uh, knowledge across generations. Research tells us the Native Americans that report greater cultural continuity also experience greater resilience to stress. So this really underscores the importance of working together to help preserve Native American culture. And at the individual level, we can build resilience using techniques that are known to help reduce the body's mental and physical reactions to stress. Techniques like mindfulness, relaxation, and breathing retraining. So as you can see, the Native American pain disparity is a social problem, one that stems from our relationships with one another. It's gonna take a multi-level approach to solve it, and we must all do our part. These things bring to mind the words of Black Elk, who said, all things are our relatives. What we do to everything, we do to ourselves. All is really one. Thank you, and I'd like to honor the indigenous collaborators and participants who made this work possible.